Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, it's John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. And I hope everyone's having a great Ixalan pre-release weekend. I hope you're out here, LGS, having a good time playing with the new cards. In today's Market Watch, we're going to talk about how some of those new cards are already impacting the standard market and some of the singles on cards that have already been existing. And we'll look at how they're trending up and down. We'll also look at modern legal cards and legacy legal cards, as we always do. And at the end, some notable mentions, mostly commander-centric cards, are in the list there today. Now, quickly before we get started, just a real fast reminder, if you're looking for a way to support us, our channel, what we do here, check out the description below. You'll find our Patreon page linked below. We're actually really close to our next goal. You'll also find some links for products on Amazon. If you go into Amazon through those links and really purchase anything, we'll get a small percentage back. And then finally, also Flipside Gaming has given a promo code to our viewers, really awesome of them, to save money. They are doing pre-orders right now on Ixalan as well as Iconic Masters, so you could save some cash there. So with that being said, let's get into the cards for today. And we're going to begin, as we always do, with the top five standard cards that have lost value this week. You'll see a couple of the cards that are rotating out, but some of the cards on the list today are actually staying in the metagame, but people are speculating that they may play a reduced role. Coming in number five, Torrential Gearhulk, down 28 cents to 17.99. Not a huge loss here, but a couple factors involved with this. Torrential Gearhulk, I mean, the card generally is just a powerhouse, and we saw how powerful it was when it initially came out in Kaladesh. Now, since then, a lot of packs of Kaladesh have been open. There's a lot of copies of this card out there, so that's going to help it stay a little bit lower in price. But also, too, the advent of a braid has also sent this card back a little bit, just because so many decks are running it. Ram and F red decks have been very popular and very successful, and Torrential Gearhawk has a hard time dealing with that card when it's out there. So because of that, some of the control decks have looked for other win conditions and such, and I do think this card will continue to slide a little bit. Number four, Hour of Devastation, down 30 cents to 353. I mean, this is a great board sweep, and even as the meta shifts, this isn't going to necessarily go away or anything like that. But this is the only card on our list today which is not a mythic. This is a rare, so it is going to have a hard time maintaining its price point, especially considering that so many packs of Hour of Devastation have been open. So a lot of copies out there. Even though it sees play, it's not going to be a card that is going to easily hold value, so it will continue to slide down. Number three, Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, down 36 cents to 1201. Now this card has seen a pretty big slide over the last couple months as we moved closer to rotation, and that's to be expected. It did hold a little value though, maybe more so to some of the other cards that were rotating out because it was seeing success in the most previous meta and some of the ramp decks. So now those players are starting to think about selling off to pick up cards for the new meta, and because of that, Ulamog is sliding a little more this week. I don't expect it to slide all that much more. It's seeing a lot of play outside of standard, which of course would include things like Eldrazi Tron and Modern, which is wildly popular, not to mention Legacy Eldrazi Stompy. So the card has utility. It's going to continue to have utility outside of standard. So even though a lot of packs have been open and a lot of packs about for Zendikar have been open, believe me, so the card is going to have a hard time probably starting to rise, but over time it will grab a foothold and it will start going up slowly. So this is one to keep an eye on. Number two, Relentless Dead, down 64 cents to 713. Another card that's rotating out, and much like Ulamog, a card that saw success in the most recent meta. Zombie decks did not go away, even though they may have been a little bit lessened over the last number of months. But at the same time, the card was still popular. But now the last few copies starting to be sold off from the standard players, and you see the dip here is pretty evident. Coming in at number one this week, Nicol Bolas, God, Pharaoh, down 92 cents to 16.24. So this is a combination of things. First off, Nicol Bolas is a good card, and there's raw power behind this card, but it is a little bit hard to cast. Not every deck can cast it. And the decks that want it, they don't want four of these. It's like a one over two of. We've seen these in Planeswalker decks. We've seen them in Control decks. And I don't think that's going to change. I think the role of this card is going to continue into the new meta, and it's a limited role. It's a smaller role. It's going to show up again as one ofs and things like that. It might even show up like in a pirate deck. I mean, it's in the right colors in Grixis, and I do think this card will continue to see about the same amount of play it sees now, but the price point still is a little bit high, especially considering, again, a lot of packs have been opened at this point, so I do feel like this will slide a little bit more. Maybe a more fair price for this card right now is around the $12, $13 mark, so we'll have to kind of watch and see where this goes. 
All right, let's move on to the cards that have gained value this week in Standard. You're going to find a lot of speculation here as to cards that could be good now that Ixalan is entering the format and rotations occurring. So we'll start off with number five. Walking Ballista up 36 cents to 12.34. Now this is a rare that's maintained its value pretty well since it came out, and I don't really see that changing quite honestly. It's a great card. He's playing a lot of places. It's been a staple in Standard since it came out. I don't see that going away even in the new meta. Even decks like Mario Vehicles could stick around in some form in the new game. So expect this card to see play in a number of decks there. Uh, perhaps dinosaur decks because it can turn on enrage and I think that's why this is going up this week is because of that speculation so it's something to watch for but even beyond that card sees vintage playing shops decks he's playing modern Tron decks so it's showing up in a ton of places Coming in at number four, Tezzeret the Schemer, up 51 cents to 349. Now here's a card a lot of players forgot about. Tezzeret's been flying under the radar a little bit recently. And you know what though? He interacts really well with the upcoming treasure tokens that you're going to find in Ixalan. He's in the right colors too, being Demir colors, Treasures Matters cards are going to be found in the Grixis colors. So this could be a compliment maybe in a pirate deck, or this could be a piece of a full-on treasure deck. We'll have to kind of see where the meta goes with this. But there's at least a chance, and some people are trying to brew it. I mean, look at those abilities. They all relate really tightly, of course, with artifacts. That plus one ability is kind of funny. He's basically making an artifact that's almost the same as a treasure token, just not called a treasure token. The minus two ability target creature gets plus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of artifacts you control. And, of course, that minus seven also artifact-centric. So, yeah, a lot going on with this card. This is definitely one to watch. Gideon of the Trials coming in at number three, up 72 cents this week to 17.22. Gideon's interesting because he has been going up pretty steadily since the official word came out that Planeswalkers retroactively are going to be considered legendary. Now, that could mean maybe some Gideon Tribal. I've seen people trying to brew this for modern as well as even standard, so we'll have to kind of see if that becomes a thing. But one thing you don't want to forget about this card is actually seeing some success in modern in Azori's control decks. Number two, Chandra Torch of Defiance, up 238 this week to 3766. Now, she continues to be extremely hot for a few reasons. First off, she's been in pretty much every deck in standard, right? <laughs> so she's showing up in a lot of places there. And when the meta shifts, that's not going to change too much. She's a great card. She's going to continue to see play. Ramonap red decks, for example, aren't going anywhere. So those type of aggressive red decks, even Mardu Vehicles decks, they could just maintain and still have this card in them, not to mention maybe some new builds coming with her. Now, aside from that, too, don't forget about Modern. Titan Shift is doing really well right now. There's definitely some buzz around that deck. It's taking up more of the field again. So she sees play there as well. Coming in at number one, the Scarab God, up 423 this week to 2420. Very popular card, and it's for a couple of reasons. There's some good cross appeal with this card. First off, one of the things that has made it popular in this most recent meta is that it's been in a couple of successful decks. It's been in some variants of the zombie deck, so because of that, the card has had a lot of attention in that format. Aside from that, commander players love this card. This is a fantastic commander card. I've been seeing a lot of play in some more spiky commander decks as well. So because of that and the fact that it has good prospects even into the next meta, it is going up actually quite a bit this week. All right, let's move on to Modern and the cards that have lost value this week. Now, of course, a week ago we found out about Iconic Masters, a little over a week ago, and there was a pretty big impact on the market last week. You're going to see more of those ripples this week as we go through. Coming in at number five, Tarmogoy from Future Sight, down $1.75 to one seventeen ninety nine. Now, this is... The original Goyf has got unique art, unique card border, so there's always going to be some interest in this card. It's still Tarmogoyf, after all. Now, with that being said, Tarmogoyf has seen less play in Modern and even Legacy recently. Because of that, all the versions of this card have been trending down. I do think that's going to continue, at least for the short term, unless a deck emerges or it's trying to play Goyfs again that does well and has a good finish. But at least in the meantime, these will continue to trend down. This one will not catch up with the others. This one is going to hold a little more value than the modern Masters versions of this card. But you just take into account the fact that it's seeing less play and all the reprints we've gotten over the years. Yeah, even this one, the unsinkable Tarmogoyf, starting to slide down a little bit. And I think this will continue. 
Number four, Mishra's Bobble, down $1.83 to $19.95. Okay, so this one continues to slide down. Maybe not as fast as it should be, quite honestly, but we know on November 17th, Iconic Masters comes out. And sure, it's a limited set, but this card's in it, and it's at the uncommon spot. So we've known this for more than a week now. The card has been dropping, but... It's an awkward time period because there are players that need this card to play with in tournaments, so they're still going to have to pick them up between now and November 17th. So because of that, you're not seeing as dramatic of a drop as maybe this card really should be going through. And it's something you're going to notice, actually, with a lot of the cards on today's list. So just keep this in mind. This card is still going to bottom out. This will probably go down to like at least a four or five dollar card, maybe even less than that, once we get the Iconic Master set on shelves. But right now, I mean, if you don't have to pick up copies of this card, I would certainly wait. Number three, Ancestral Vision from Time Spiral. Down 266 to 4293. Another card that will be an Iconic Masters. This one will be rare. It's got new art on it as well. Although the new art looks great. It looks awesome, actually. But I, I really like the original art, too, on this one. And some players may prefer the original. I guess we'll have to kind of see if that plays any sort of role in pricing going forward. But yes, this card is going to continue to slide as we move closer to November 17th and beyond. Coming in at number two, Horizon Canopy, down 318 to 77.22. This one is from Future Sight, and we know it's going to be reprinted at Rare in Iconic Masters. So yes, it is going down. It's been going down for a couple weeks now, but I will say this card actually went up a little bit in the last 24 hours. So it just goes to show you, it's not going to be a crash. It's going to be down a little bit, up a little bit, down a little bit, up a little bit, probably until the set comes out towards the end of November. Now, I will say this. If you're in the market of picking up Horizon Canopy, watch the market very closely. You're going to have a small window of time to get this at the best price. It's going to be probably shortly after the Iconic Master set comes out, and people are opening packs and drafting, and you're seeing that happening at game stores, and then people trying to sell their cards back to the stores and such. That's going to be the time period where you'll get the best deal. If you wait too long, this card will start creeping up, and I saw that a lot with Modern Masters 2017. The set came out, prices went down, and then they kind of stabilized, and people thought they were going to keep going down, or all of a sudden more magical product was going to show up, and they would get a better deal. That better deal never came. Those cards started going up, and they went up slowly at first, and they start going up a little faster. So the key cards, your fetch lands, Liliana, Snapcaster, Cavern of Souls, it was a short time sale, basically, <laughs> and they started creeping up again. Now, they're not back to where they were originally, or where the originals were, I should say, originally, but they will get there at some point if they don't see another reprint, like, within the next couple of years. So that's the thing to think about. Something that these sets do, these master sets do to the market is even though they do give the market more copies, they also encourage more people to buy into decks. So for example, I'm a average player and I say, you know what, I can't afford for Horizon Canopies to build whatever deck I want to build. So I'm not even thinking about that. But then I go to a draft and I pull one in my draft of Iconic Masters. And maybe I trade for another one because I've got another great pull that I don't really need to play with. So I trade for this. Now I have two copies. And now I'm starting to think, hmm, maybe I should just buy two more copies. I can actually afford that. So all of a sudden these cards dip, but they don't dip for all that long. And sometimes you start to see a pretty big increase back up the scale again. So be really close to the market when it comes to cards like this. Coming at number one, Gorios Vengeance, down 332 this week to 4077. This card is not an Iconic Masters, but it did spike pretty hard a couple months ago, so this is just normal snapback that you're seeing on it now. It was really undervalued a couple months ago, around the $20, $25 mark. So this isn't too surprising that it went up and is now stabilizing, but I do see it coming down at least a little bit more, but it won't go back down to $20, $25 again. All right, let's move on to the top five modern cards that have gained value this week. And with one notable exception, you're going to see mostly commander cards on the list this week. Now, a lot of times people ask, well, why do you talk so much about commander cards when you're talking about modern? Well, these are all modern legal cards. And what I do is I go to where the headlines are, basically. And if the modern cards aren't moving that much, there's not a lot to talk about there. So what I want to do is spotlight the cards that actually do have an impact on people's financial situation, whether they want to pick up cards or maybe trade them away or what have you. So 
we're going to look at the cards that matter. And this week, the cards that matter are commander cards. Now, that will change. I mean, this is normal because when we get closer to Iconic Masters as well as Masters 25, there's going to be more interest again in some modern builds and stuff like that. Or if there's a major modern tournament with a surprising outcome, things will change, obviously. But with that being said, number five is Scape Shift, a modern staple. It's up 92 cents to 55.86. Now, Titan Shift decks actually pretty good, seeing a nice percentage of the field, a little more than probably they were seeing a few months ago. So with that being said in this card, it's still not being reprinted. It's not in Iconic Masters. Maybe Masters 25, hopefully, but it is ticking up this week. Number four, Battlefire Dragon from the original Innistrad, up $1.23 to 1461. Now this card has never been reprinted, and it's a great upgrade for the Commander 2017 Dragon deck, so it does have some attention this week. Feels like every week we're trying to find new dragons to slam into that deck, and here's the latest one. And it's a decent one, definitely gonna be good there, so there is some attention on it now. Number three, Dragon Lord Jermoka, up a dollar thirty to sixteen eighty nine. Now we have talked about this card previously since the Commander twenty seventeen deck has come out. It's back on our list today, and it's an awesome upgrade. Number two, Vegvine, up a dollar eighty-three to twenty-eight dollars. Now here's another card that is very modern playable. It's actually been doing well recently. Now it's going up a little bit this week because Saffron Olive did feature it in a deck tech, a John Deathvine deck. Number one, Naxaw Click, up 204 to 462. You might be wondering yourself, why Naxaw Click, number one? Well, it's another good commander card. There's actually a pretty spiky commander build going around right now with Maricel, which was one of the alternate commanders from the Wizard deck, which just came out a few weeks back. And this card is part of that. Now, the reason this one's jumping maybe more so than some of the others is because it is a Shadowmoor rare. And that block, especially Lorwyn Shadowmoor, was out during a time when sales were down for magic, which meant that less cards were being printed. So a lot of time these Lorwyn, Morningtide, Shadowmoor, Eventide cards tend to jump pretty quick. And I think that's part of why this has jumped as fast as it did. All right, let's move on to Legacy and the cards that have lost the value this week. And again, you're going to see some ripple effects from some of the buyouts over the last few weeks. Number five, Nether Void, down 2602 this week to 399.95. This was a card that looked to be a target of a buyout a few weeks back, and perhaps a lot of the copies are back in the market now as it's been trending down. Number four, same story here, Elephant Graveyard, down 2801 to 187.96. Target of a buyout about a month ago or so at this point, and it's been slowly declining ever since, and that trend has continued. Number three, the Abyss, down 2949 to 389.95. Now, maybe this was a buyout, but this card does tend to flux a little bit back and forth, so maybe it was just normal stabilization too. The Abyss is a good card. It's definitely playable in 9394 formats, among other places. Number two, City of Brass, down 4301 to 199.99. This is from Arabian Nights. And all the Arabian Nights cards have been wildly popular, even the ones not on the reserve list like this one. And number one, speaking of Arabian Nights, Diamond Valley, down $58.92 to $299.95. This card was hanging around the $200 price point. It then was definitely targeted for a buyout. It spiked really hard, starting to come back down again. I don't think it will get back down to $200, but it will at least come down a little more. All right, let's move on to the cards that have gained value this week in Legacy. Coming in number five, Burnham Jin from Arabian Nights, of course, up 2265 to 12198. Now, this is not on the reserve list. There's actually cheaper versions of the card out there, but again, there's just a lot of attention on these Arabian Nights cards. Number four, Jazam Jin, up 2874 to 575. This card used to sit around the $500 mark. Recently, it's been sitting around the $600 mark. It's definitely seen some real growth. Number three, Underground Sea from Unlimited, up 3801 to 557.01. Number two, City in a Bottle, up 5241 to 250. This does feel like another buyout from Arabian Nights. And number one, this one's interesting, Mox Diamond, up $110.07 to $299.95. It's not very often that you see a card on our list when we talk Legacy that it actually matters in the Legacy game, but this one does. It sees play in like Four Color Loam, and maybe more importantly, Lands Deck. So when you take that into account, this card could be seeing some increase due to playability, but also the playability of the card may have also attracted the attention of people just trying to buy copies. And that's probably what happened here, to be quite honest. This is a unique card because it is on the reserve list, 
But it did get a reprint because the reserve list had different rules that changed a number of times throughout its history. At one point, they used to say that if it's on the reserve list, they could still make a foil version of the card for like promo purposes or in a specialty set. Because of that, this made its way into a From the Vault and got a reprint with some really sweet art, actually. Now, they changed that rule, so they won't do that again in the future. It's kind of funny to look back and see how they changed the rules a few times with the reserve list. But this card, you can find another version of the card from from the vault. But technically, yes, it is on the reserve list. Not going to be reprinted again. It's a very good card. Also a great cube card. So really interesting to see it here on the list today. All right, notable cards of the week. So here's a few other honorable mentions I wanted to make sure everyone was aware of. A lot of these, again, are going to be commander-centric, but a few exceptions as we go through. First, we have Shared Animosity, up 90 cents to 21.49. The reason I wanted to point this card out, it's been really hot ever since the Commander 2017 decks have come out, and I really don't see it going down in value, or at least that much, anytime soon. Again, it is a Morning Tide card, and because of its extra rarity, and the fact that it is great in Tribal decks, there's so much focus right now in Tribal, because of course you have Commander 2017, as well as all the Tribal elements of Ixalan and Iconic Masters, I think this card is going to continue to go up. Necropolis Regent, I'm 91 cents, stuff 513. I think we talked about this one last week, but still trending up. Great upgrade for the Commander 2017 Vampire deck. Next, we have Urza's Power Plant from Antiquities. This is the Columns art version of 278 to 1310. Every once in a while, one of these just goes up, and we saw one of the towers go up a couple weeks back. I think it just has to do with the fact that so many people are interested in playing Tron in Modern right now that some players like the older versions or the original versions of the card, and when they pick up a version, they want all the art to match because that does give you a little bit of a competitive edge. So there you go. I think every once in a while, one of these just goes up because maybe a couple of people at the same time decide they want a particular version for their Tron deck, and you see a little bit of movement from these cards. The art is really cool on this one, too. Next, we have Well of Knowledge at 404 to 499. Now, this is a great commander card, good group hug sort of card, and you'll find this in commander decks that are trying to squeeze out card advantage typically. Ramsey's Overdark from Legends of $15.73 to $26. These gold legends from Legends have been hot recently, and some of them are reserve list cards like this one, some aren't, but they've all been getting at least a little bit of attention. And I think it's just because they're cool and they're old and they're getting harder and harder to find and Commander players just kind of like having them. And that totally makes sense. So this card is the latest one to go up. Next is Angus McKenzie of $15.85 to $120. This one, pretty much the same story, but with this particular card, this has been popular for a long time because it's actually a really good Commander card. So with that being said, yes, it's been a great card. It's been going up, especially in recent months. It continues to go up, and I think it's going to still go up. It might snap back a little bit here and there, but just generally as this card starts to and continues to dry up, I think that you're going to find the price point rise maybe close to $200, maybe six, eight months down the road. Mirror Universe, up 1684 to 163 68 This card, originally I thought maybe was a target of a buyout, but it also felt very undervalued at its price point, so this could be a card just catching up to where it really belongs in the market. So with that being said, those are the cards for today. I hope you're having a great time at the Exxon pre-release this weekend. If you're making some trades or picking up some cards, hopefully this video helps you with the information you need to know to get a good deal or not be pulled into a bad deal. And aside from that, hope you're having a good time and you're having fun. Let me know in the comments below, either this video or other videos, how your pre-release weekend went, your record, and crazy pulls. I love to hear that stuff. So until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.